For the Choral Pilgrimage 2013, I've decided to include one of the most famous pieces of uh, sacred music ever written, Allegro's Miserere. But audiences will hear it slightly different. I had the very good opportunity a couple of years ago to meet uh, Ben Byron Wigfield. During the conversation, we got talking about uh, Allegri, and he told me that he'd done all this research on it. So I said, well, look, send, send me you know, your research, and I'd love to look at it. And I must say, when it arrived, it was absolutely fascinating, because basically, it, you know, what we hear today is not at all what would have been heard in Allegri's time, or indeed the many years after. I first heard Allegri's Miserere as a chorister at King's College, Cambridge, uh, when I used to sing the top C myself. And the copies we had were these extraordinary photocopies of a cut and paste patchwork of different source material. Um, there was Charles Burney's 18th century publication on one page, and uh, the plain song came from some other source. And uh, just before the top C, the printed section would end, and someone had written in with pen the, uh, the remainder of the, of the piece. And I always wondered, what, what's this all about? Why is it like this? I um, thought nothing of it for many years, and then got to talking to someone about the Allegri, and uh, my mind went back to those funny old copies. And uh, I had a bit of time on my hands, and I thought, I'm going to see what, uh, what this is all about and uh, investigate what, uh, what it should be. So what we're doing for this year's Choral Pilgrimage is in effect um, showing the audience the evolution of this amazing work. We all know it for those wonderful top seas. We've heard it in every cathedral up and down the country at Lent. And they are obviously exquisite and delightful to hear every time you listen to it. Audiences will not be deprived of those because we come full circle, but from the beginning we chart its, its evolution, its history. So we are including some uh, um, ornaments that happened uh, in the mid 18th century. Uh, I've also added a few more ornaments to that. Um, and we come full circle to what we hear today. What I was able to achieve was firstly getting hold of the Vatican manuscripts that still exist, none of which have the ornaments for which the, the Sistine Chapel choir was famous. However, there is an 18th century manuscript that does have uh, these ornaments, and uh, I've, which I managed to track down uh, incorrectly catalogued in the British Library. So we do have some idea of what the piece should be like. I think this version is one that will still show the incredible beauty in this work and the reason why people flocked to hear it before it got transformed into this 20th century hybrid, uh, which, which is equally uh, beautiful if wrong. <laughs> It is an incredibly evocative piece. I think it's the sheer fact that it's actually quite static, it involves plain song, and then you have this glorious distant quartet where um, the, 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 the top soprano sings these incredible high notes. It, it is an amazing thing to, to just sit in a, in a beautiful cathedral abbey and listen to. <laughs> 